In its 12-year history, the MCU or Marvel Cinematic Universe has had some of the best comic book adapted films. It has also got some of the worst. And in the middle, it has also very mediocre attempts. One such example is Captain Marvel. That movie had a very boring character. It had a boring villain. It had a very boring story. And it also had a generic tone that didn't make for all the effort that went into making this production. It has also got one of the biggest problems of the MCU, and that is breaking of continuity and a total lack of coherency between what was done there and what we had from previous installments in the MCU. This trend, however, was not stopped there, as we also had in Avengers Endgame, another example of continuity breaking, and that didn't help at all the situation with the whole of the MCU. Still, after this, the apparent success of Captain Marvel with making one billion dollars on the box office and how they are trying to propel this woke narrative of women over powerful and all that, the MCU and Kevin Feige announced that Captain Marvel was going to be now the face not only of the whole of the MCU, but also the face of the new Avengers team in light of what happened in Avengers Endgame. They were trying to propel Captain Marvel as a sort of mascot, not only for the MCU, but also for all of Marvel. Taking away that spot from Spider-Man, a character with a 50-year history, but also such a popularity that you can see Spider-Man everywhere, promoting Marvel, and of course also the MCU, you could say. The fact that they are trying to do this with Captain Marvel as a character didn't sit well with many fans that did not consider the character A, that popular, and B, a wasted opportunity inside the MCU, because many saw that it had made a lot of money because it was inserted in between a main event and many also thought that it was required viewing in order to understand what, what, what was going to happen in the final installment of that section, of that chapter of sorts in the MCU. Because of that, it was also surprising to many and cause for rage and anger that Captain Marvel 2 was announced with all the fanfare as a continuation not only of Carol Danvers' story, but also a sort of continuation of the Avengers uh, story. And also, the rumors that started spreading. Do you remember when they said that there was possibility for a romantic relationship between Captain Marvel and Spider-Man in a sort of platonic way, because it was going to propel and establish the character even more as a competent leader because of Spider-Man's approval. Do you remember when they said that Carol Danvers was going to be now a sort of lesbian in order to further the agenda? Well, I remember all that. And it was all done in the spirit of two things, basically. Furthering the character and giving it a major levity inside the MCU, but also to further the woke agenda that we are seeing spreading its cancer all over Hollywood. None of those attempts actually had any success, apparently, because we have now, and this is thanks to my good friend on Twitter, Clark Kent, who uh, told me about this, a rebranding of the Captain Marvel 2 film. And now it is called The Marvels. <laughs> the Marvels. Because it is not really important to have Carol Danvers' name there on the title. Even Black Panther, called Wakanda Forever, has Black Panther in the name. And he is no longer there. And we know why. So all the films... Quantumania, or whatever the stupid fucking name they gave to the Iron and the Wasp next to film, well, it has also Iron and the Wasp there. It says there Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It says there Spider-Man, No Way Home. All of these characters have their names attached 
to their respective films, save for Captain Marvel. So, my question is, would you really, really try to rebrand your most important character, their words, not mine, that character that you tried to establish as the face of your company? Would you really take out the character's name out of the film? If it were that popular, would you really risk not having this character's name into the movie and risk also that people might not identify that this is a continuation of the previous film and have it flop? I think that they are testing the waters over at uh, Marvel and the MCU, Marvel Studios, is saying, basically, see if this sticks with people. But intelligent guys can see through their lies, and they can see that oh, this is yet again another thing that they are doing to try and get people's graces and people's favor. It's another gimmick that they are trying to pull on people because they are not confident on the work that they are doing. And also because they are not confident on this character. Sure enough, the character's lack of popularity is uh, guilty of that or is to blame for that. But there is also another little detail that they are forgetting. And that is Brie Larson. She is an unbearable individual who comes across as stuck up, snobbish, and also gives this a vibe of being superior to anyone else. She might believe it, she might not believe it, but that makes her unlikable. It was evident for many people during the junkets that promoted uh, Endgame that they you know, the cast didn't like her that much, that they didn't enjoy her company, that they were uncomfortable with her. It was also evident that many in the audience did not like Carol Danvers, they didn't have a good impression of her, and also of Brie Larson. Instead of trying to recast the character as some rumors in the past said, now they have decided to just rebrand the movie in which she's going to appear, the sequel, the continuation of her story. One can only wonder who the Marvels are going to be. When I see that Marvels, I remember that Alex Ross illustrated comic book that depicted this guy Sheldon, who is a photographer, that is covering the age of the Marvels when all of these characters that we know and love started to become public during the 1960s. And this is a story that is actually quite good, wonderfully illustrated by the great Alex Ross, and that's what I get out of the Marvels title. I don't expect something like that to happen. It certainly is something related to perhaps an interaction and sort of alliance between Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel, and I suppose that Miss Marvel is going to come out uh, saying that she is a great Captain Marvel fan, that she can't wait to work with her, and she's going to become her sidekick, pretty much in the same way that Spider-Man became Iron Man's sidekick, Iron Man's little apprentice in his very own freaking films. <laughs> That's the state of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And there are still people that dare say that it's still the greatest thing ever. That is left to be seen. We still have The Eternals, Black Widow and Shang-Chi to be released. And we will see what people think about this. As for this renaming of the Captain Marvel sequel. Let me tell you that. The renaming and the addition of as many characters as they can inside the film is not going to save this one. This is something that audiences didn't like. This character was unlikable. And the actress playing it was also unlikable as all hell set loose. Is that going to help it? I don't think so. I think that all this and the woke agenda and the activist nature of Brie Larson have affected this film and its possibilities.
but trying to propel it as the face of Marvel and the MCU is also something that hardcore comic book fans are not going to forgive very lightly, especially those that are Spider-Man fans. And let me tell you that there are a handful of them, there are lots of them out there that love, love Spider-Man. But of course, this is only my opinion and I want to know what you have to think and what you have to say about this thing. So let me know down below in the comments. Remember that in the end, you are the one who decides.